Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, this is not a video about a new radio. This is a video about the Zygu G90. And what I want to talk about in this video is why I personally still like this radio and would still recommend it. Now, just like with any radio, even those top tier radios from Yaesu, Icom and Kenwood, the Zygu G90 has suffered issues since it was released. Now, issues from not turning on, internal tuner issues, screen freezing and power issues. But luckily, nearly all of those were fixed via firmware updates. Now, the latest firmware update for the G90 was back in April this year. That was version 1.8B01 for Maine. And this is welcomed by many G90 owners. Now, to me, that shows that Zygu are still improving this radio after five years of this radio being released. Now, if you compare this version I have here with previous versions of the G90, you can see that the front panel knobs have been redesigned for a sleeker look and apparently a better grip. A great addition was changing the rear power connector to an Anderson power pole style connector instead of those cheap kind of plasticky connectors that you can never be sure are making a connection. Now this makes for a more robust power connection and it's more compatible with portable power packs, which mostly use power poles for quick, secure power connections. Now that's great for portable field operations. I also use power poles for all my radio gear in the shack too. So hooking it back up to the shack, if I want to from taking it out portable, it's super quick. Now for me, the G90 is quite a compact size. Yes, you have the new FTX1 and the 705, the X6200 radios, but this radio has an edge over those radios. And well, it's a lot cheaper. Now that edge is the 20 watts RF output. And while 20 watts may not sound impressive compared to a 100 watt radio, 20 watts is the practical sweet spot in my opinion. Now it's enough power to break through marginal band conditions, yet still efficient for portable setups and extended battery life. Now you could run this radio from a compact battery for hours, even with the tuner engaged. Now when I go portable or use this in the garden, I use those bio NO rechargeable batteries, which work absolutely brilliantly. Now the internal tuner performance often gets exaggerated, it can, however, handle up to around 5 to 1 SWR, not thousands of ohms that some people claim. However, it is still very good from my testing and use over the years. So it's kind of perfect for those back garden dipoles, verticals and some wire antennas. Another thing that I really like is the G90's color LCD with that real time waterfall. It's quite special at this price point. Now, the reason why I like this is that band activity is visible at a glance, making it easy to quickly jump between stations while you're scanning a band. Now, the menu system is quite intuitive and the hardware buttons handle most of those functions. So there's no diving into deep menus every few minutes just to change something. Now, this has to be one of the good selling points because when it comes to new users to the hobby, the last thing you want to do is get overwhelmed going into hundreds of different menu options just to change the power setting or change your audio or a filter setting. Having a lot of the functions available on the front panel makes it super easy to learn and use. So great for newcomers to the hobby. The G90 does also incorporate a digital filter and this has had some improvements with recent firmware updates. Switching between say USB and USB D will increase the bandwidth for the USB D mode, essentially to be used for digital modes like FT8, for example. Now, talking of digital modes, the G90, unfortunately, does not have USB audio and CAT control built in. You need to use a TTL interface and an audio interface to connect it to a computer. However, the DE19 USB expansion adapter is perfect for that, specifically designed by Zygu for the G90 and some of their older radios too. Now the DE19 comes with all the cables you need to connect between the G90 and your computer's USB port. There's also a connection on the DE19 which can connect to the Zygu 125B amplifier. 
so automatic band switching takes place via CAT command. Now the first cable you connect is the accessory cable into this port on the rear. It's a multi-pin socket, it's the only one there, so it's quite easy to find. You then need to use this 3.5 millimeter cable, which is used for CIV or CAT control, and this plugs into the lower 3.5 millimeter socket that's on the left side of the G90 towards the front. Now these cables then plug into the appropriate ports on the DE19 expansion adapter. But there's also a single USB-C cable that plugs between the DE19 and your computer. Now over on the computer, while running JTDX for FT8, there's a little configuration required, and that's to set the radio connection and the audio in and out. For ease of use, I actually used OmniRig as a man in the middle between the DE19 and the JTDX application. Now these are the settings that I use within OmniRig, making a note of the board rate and the RTS and DTR lines. I just then selected OmniRig within the JTDX settings for the radio and set PTT method to CAT. Now on the audio tab, you simply select the DE19's audio in and out channels that your computer should recognize when it's plugged in via USB. Now for this to work correctly, the G90 must be in digital mode as either USB-D or LSB-D as only in those digital modes will audio be routed to the rear accessory port that's then connected to the DE19. Another setting on the radio you need to make is you need to change the audio input source from mic to line in if you've not already done so. And that's it. You should now be able to use applications like JTDX, SSTV, and even FreeDV. Of course, you can use other software packages like FL Digi, HRD, and pretty much any ham application that needs cat control and audio. Now, one of the things that I really like about the G90 is its torque power. Now, I know we spoke about its 20 watts earlier on the start of the video, but if we connect the radio up to a power meter and enable the speech compression, just look at the peak power here. Now, some radios claim they have a specific output, but their modulation tuning is so weak, RF output becomes minimal. Now, with the G90, it really does feel like it's pushing that full 20 watts of power. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M0DQW. It's M0DQW testing the Zygu G90 power output. This is with the microphone processor turned off. The microphone processor turned off and we are also transmitting into a dummy load. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M0 DQW now transmitting on the Zygu G90 still into a dummy load and with the microphone processor turned on. With the microphone processor is now turned on. Over. Now another great optional extra is the G90H1 holding cooling fan bracket. Now this is primarily designed for use at home in the shack that consists of a powerful fan that sits under the radio to keep the G90 as cool as possible. On the rear, there's a little power fly lead which plugs into the radio and then you plug the G90 power cord into the side port of that cooling bracket. Now, not only does this allow extra cooling, there's also two pull out legs which angles the G90 up slightly for a more comfortable viewing if you're going to be sat at a desk. Of course, you can still take this out portable if you're using it at a table or a flat surface, if you're camping or if it's a field day, but it's not really usable if you're gonna be using the G90 in like a radio bag, for example. Anyway, guys, just a brief overview of the Zygu G90 and why I think it's still a great radio in 2025. The main things that I really like about this is one, the price. The price is relatively cheap compared to some of the other radios on the market. The second most important thing that I actually love is the torque power. This radio it does feel like you're gonna make a contact and give you that extra motivation and boost with 20 watts as opposed to 10 or five. I also like the form factor and the fact that it's got an inbuilt tuner. 
Now, personally, I don't really use tuners. I much prefer to use a resonant antenna. However, the option is there in case you ever need it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the Zygu G90 down in the comments below. If you've owned one of these radios, then let us know if you've had any issues. If you own one of these radios and love it, also let us know why you like that radio. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.